Hello, everyone. My name is Christy Nowak, and I'm the librarian for Composition. And in this video, what I'm going to be talking about is peer reviewed articles. For a lot of composition assignments, you're required to use peer reviewed articles in your research. So this video is just going to talk a little bit about what those articles are, some strategies for navigating them, and how to identify whether or not an article is peer reviewed. So just to get started with the definition, uh, the definition of a peer reviewed article is it's an article that is reviewed by experts in the field. So these articles are sometimes also called refereed or scholarly articles, but you can see a little image of the process in, on the slide. And what the process is, is a researcher who's conducting original research will write an article about their original findings. They will submit it to a journal with a peer review process. And that journal will send it to subject experts who will review the article for things like quality, originality, whether it makes contribution to the field, and they'll make a recommendation about whether or not to publish the article. Sometimes they'll also recommend revisions to the article. So when you see a article that is a published peer-reviewed article that has gone through this process, what you know is that there was a lot of involvement from experts in the production of that article. That doesn't mean every peer-reviewed article is perfect or that they all agree with each other, um, but you know that the, that article was reviewed by experts prior to being published. So that's the basic definition. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull up a browser so that we can look at an example and sort of see what one of these articles looks like. You can't always tell just by looking, because as I mentioned, what makes something peer reviewed is having gone through that process. But typically, these articles will have a lot um, of common features in terms of their structure and how you can read them. Looking at this example, one thing you always want to be able to identify is what journal the article is published in. In this case, it's climatic change. It's listed up here. You can see the volume and issue and year. And that's important to know because, as mentioned, the peer review process happens at the journal level, so being able to identify that journal helps you sort of figure out um, where that article was published and what process it went through. In terms of title, it's very typical for these articles to have really complex specific titles. Um, so this title is Managed Retreat as a Strategy for Climate Change Adaptation in Small Communities Public Health Implications. That's a pretty typical title. Um, in terms of the authors, it's common because these uh, articles are often written by experts to see something about their credentials. So this might be their degree, what university they work at. Um, these little superscripts here are telling me that the information is below. I think in this case, it's at the very bottom of the article. Uh, so here's some information about uh, the credentials and what's called an affiliation or which university they work at. Um, and you can see that about um, the authors here. So some other things about an article. Um, the abstract is something that's in pretty much all peer-reviewed articles. It's a really important part because it's basically a short summary of everything that's in the article. It does not replace reading the article, but it's always where you want to start because it gives you the information of what it's about and helps you make a decision about whether it's worth reading the whole article. Um, so this is telling me, you know, why they did the research, what they did, what they found. Um, that's generally going to be the kind of information you're going to see in a abstract. Going down a little bit, uh, the introduction usually talks about the background of other research that's been done in the area. It's a great place to find other articles you might be interested in. And it's usually sort of making an argument about why this research needs to be done. The methods, um, you won't see this section in absolutely every article because not every uh, area conducts experiments. But methods talk about what they did. So this is going to tell you, you know, what, the, what this research involved, what the researchers did. Um, typically, that will also be combined with results, which is what they found. Um, knowing a little bit about how these articles are laid out will help you find information as you're reading these articles. So looking through this, um, the text tends to be formal. You might see some charts or graphs or maps. 
Uh, if there are any pictures in peer-reviewed articles, they're going to be very, very related to what the article is talking about. There aren't going to be clip art type pictures. The discussion sort of gives some information about, you know, the implications of what they found. Uh, conclusions will frequently wrap up the article and maybe talk about directions for future research. So these are some of the biggest sections that you're going to see in peer-reviewed articles. Peer-reviewed articles will always, always have a references section. This is where they cite all of the great research that they looked at when they were putting together their article. Um, so you'll usually be asked to cite your resources when you're putting together papers. A big part of that is that it's a really important part of the academic process and you can see you know, what a professional citation list looks like here. This is also a fantastic place to get ideas for other articles you might want to use in your research. So those are the big parts of a peer-reviewed article. They might look a little bit different, but in general, this is pretty typically what they look like. Again, you do want to make sure that you can identify what journal it was published in and be able to um, clarify that it had a peer review process because you can't always tell by looking. In terms of identifying whether or not something is peer reviewed, one thing I do want to point out, this is the website for climatic change, the journal that I was using the example from. Oftentimes when a, article, when a journal is peer reviewed and has a peer review process, they kind of like to brag about it. So frequently it will be mentioned on their website. For example, this is talking about their peer review process and how they assign reviewers, evaluate reviews, and evaluate articles. So this is saying they have a peer review process and talking about exactly what their process is. Also, while I will go into some database search strategies more in another video, here I just wanted to briefly mention that a lot of our databases, especially over on the left-hand side, will have an option to limit to scholarly or peer-reviewed journals. These limits don't work perfectly because sometimes peer-reviewed journals publish little book reviews or news items that aren't full articles, but it can really help you get started. So that's just a really quick overview of what peer-reviewed peer articles are and what you might find in your search. Um, if you have any questions about this, this is my contact information, as well as the link for the uh, CO150 research guide online. The CO150 research guide has a lot of examples of uh, popular and peer-reviewed uh, articles if you'd like to see more uh, examples. Thank you.